Okay. Uh, sorry about filming the screen with the camera. I always apologize. I hate when I do that. I could install a screen recorder on here, but I'm going to be flipping back and forth between different display managers, so there's no way to record that uh, fluidly. So uh, you may not be able to see anything, but I'm going to explain stuff real quick. In the previous video, I just talked about the Chromebook. Now I'm going to just show some usage of it. Uh, so again, you have Chrome, you have Chrome uh, extensions. Um, Again, I talked about in a previous video about how uh, there's a lot of things where if I was to like open this up and type in Linux, or that's Linux Mint, uh, Linux, just to do a search on Linux, lots of times when I would click on a link, it worked that time, but lots of times what it ends up doing is it thinks I long click and it brings up that menu. But that's not a problem because I have Vimium and if you use Chrome or Chromium, I suggest installing Vimium, I'm sure that there's probably a, um, uh, a extension or plugin or whatever they call them on, on Firefox does the same thing. But basically uh, with Vimium, I'm able to use my keyboard to, to interact with stuff. So if I was to click on the linux.org and bring that up, now I can hit F on my keyboard and what it does is it puts these little yellow tags next to each um, link and I know you can't see that but they're letters and I can type in the letter and go to that link. So if I type in SD, it's going to bring me to that link right there. So I don't have to click stuff. Uh, and Vimium is just a great thing to have if you're used to Vim key bindings and you want to use them in your web browser. So that's just a side note on that. Again, I talked about installing Termux. So here I have Termux. And if I go into, I have it set up just like I do on my Android device. I have a hidden folder called .bin in my home directory with my own personal scripts. And again, I use Termux because it, um, it allows me to interact with Chromium OS uh, Chrome, Chrome OS. Uh, there is a Chromium OS though. Um, with the clipboard and stuff like that. For example, I have a tiny URL, tiny URL command. And the biggest drawback to this on my regular desktop, when I'm in, on my desktop or i3 on this, I've created keyboard shortcuts for pretty much all these scripts. Where on this, I actually have to go here and type it. Um, but let's say I was at filmsbychris.com and I wanted to get a tiny URL for that. Uh, I just copy that URL and I type tiny URL in my shell and it's going to grab a tiny URL, put it in my clipboard for Chrome OS and give me a QR code just like it does on my Android device. And that is why Termux is so nice because it will interact with Chrome OS. You can install that API. So check out my videos on Android about that. Um, and you can have it open the web browser if you want. So if I type in, uh, so that URL should be in my clipboard now. I should be able to say uh, Termux uh, a uh, Termux, I think it's just Termux open. Termux open, and I can paste in that URL. Which one of the annoying things is normally in the shell you go use Control Shift V to paste. In Termux, it's Control Alt V to paste. And if you do Control Shift V, uh, it adds funny characters, and you got a backspace. That's kind of annoying, but I can do Termux open and say open that URL and it will open up the web browser here to that. And the biggest drawback for Chrome OS in that aspect is normally I create shortcut keys for that, where this I have to usually tab into here and type out the command, but I just type TIN and hit tab and there's the tiny URL one and I hit that and it's going to generate the tiny URL. There's nothing in the clipboard so it didn't get that there. But Again, the biggest drawback to this is it won't access my SD card. There's some sort of restriction on Chrome OS and the storage that way. Again, it's a mixture of using Android applications which are confined on Chrome OS, which is restricting the Android applications. Uh, it's annoying. But if there's an application I want that doesn't run in Termux or I want to use a GUI application in Chrome OS, you can hit uh, Control. Control Alt T, yeah, Control Alt T, and that will open up this shell. And if you've put your device in the developer mode, uh, you can easily type shell, and you have a shell that you can now use pseudo commands and run uh, stuff as root. Uh, and if you've used Crouton, which I'm not gonna go over the installation of Crouton, I can type in again, I know you can't see it, sudo enter chur root. I do that, type in my password, make sure you guys can't see my keyboard here, and I'm pretty sure I just typed that wrong. Let me try again. Okay, and now I am in a full Debian uh, shell here. Um, so I can type in commands. I can use apt, aptitude, apt-get, install, whatever I want from Debian repositories with ease. By default with the crouton install, you can tell it what desktop environment you want. I originally installed the XFCE, but then I changed the script to load up 
I3. So I have it set up, so I just type I3 and hit enter. And now it's going to start up Xorg. And this again is not a virtual machine. This is an Ature root. So it's running natively. It's using the Debian file system. It's just using the Chrome OS kernel. And now in here, again, normally I use the, the Windows key, Windows key with quotation marks there, um, as my modifier key. You don't have that on here, so I just switched it over to the Alt key, which can be annoying in some programs. But I can use Alt Enter, opens up my shell here. I have Tmux, not Termux, but Tmux running in here. Uh, so you can see like my conky output from when I started this command. But I just hit uh, Control A C to create a new shell. And now I can install whatever I want. I can type in things like Blender, which I installed at the end of the last video. And, uh, and it loads no problem here. And I only played with this for a few seconds before I recorded this. Uh, and it's a little confusing because of uh, the mouse setup. There is no right click, you have to hit Alt click, I think, to right click. Um, but if I had a separate mouse, I think I'd probably be fine. Uh, there's no F12. So again, you have a row of keys here at the top, which are in Chrome OS, you know, your brightness and contrast, your volume keys, that sort of stuff. In Linux, they work as function keys. In Chrome OS, you have to hit search and those keys to work as function keys. Normally in Blender, F12 is your render key, which you could probably change. There is no F key, it only, it only goes up to F11 here. There is no F12, so I have to click the render button over here to render. But it renders, you know, it's basic things like this cube, no problem. I can type in a sphere, add a sphere, grab that, put it there. I can clone that, put it there, clone that, put it here. Clone that, put it here. I can add in a plane and I can scale that up like this. Again, then I can click my render. And uh, just, I mean, this is very basic. You're not gonna go do an in-depth render, but it took one second to render that out. If I, normally I add, I like doing ambient occlusion, environment lighting, and changing that to uh, multiply. And then again, can't hit F12. I'll go back to here and click render. And here it's taking a little bit longer, probably two or three seconds, three seconds to render that out. So again, you're not gonna do any in-depth Blender stuff, but like at the intro of my videos, I'll have you know little Blender animations with text and stuff. And this is at uh, half of 1080p resolution. Let me put it up to a full uh, 1080p and re-render it. Again, you're not gonna get much power out of this, but it is, it is doable. And I'm gonna bet, let's see, five, six, probably close to 10 seconds for one frame. Which, if you're doing a video at 30 frames a second, it's still going, okay, just shy of 12, no, just over 12 seconds for one frame. So no, it, you're not gonna do, you could do stuff, but it's, it's, it's rendering out is gonna take forever if you do it at full resolution and even at half 1080p, uh, it's gonna be your soul. But you could do it. And the same, like I said, with Caden Live, you could work with proxy files, and I bet you can edit it, no problem, but when you go to render it, it's probably gonna take forever to render it. But you know what? Back in the 90s, I had, my computer was slower this and I did rendering. Yeah, I wasn't doing 1080p, I was doing you know 720 by um, 480 resolution. Um, but yeah, back then I had to say, yeah, this five minute video, render it, and then I go to sleep and wake up the next day and it's done. You could do that with a machine like this. Um, so yeah, uh, control Q to kill that. But you can see I can also start up GIMP and load up GIMP. But right here, this is the same as running uh, you know, a regular Linux distro. If I want to go back to Chrome OS, I hit Control shift alt and this arrow key here, arrow back, and now I'm back in Chrome OS, Control shift alt I go back to my Debian desktop with i3, I can go back and forth. Uh, because I'm using Tmux, not Termux, but Tmux in my shell, uh, the actual same shell that's over there I have here. Um, I do think that if you're running stuff like if I try to open, um, do I have Thunar installed? So Thunar file browser, I try to run that here in the shell. I think it kind of hangs until I go back. Obviously it's not gonna pop it up in Chrome OS, but yeah, as soon as I got back here, it loaded it up. So it's like, if you're trying to load Xorg stuff while you're not in Xorg, it kind of hangs until you get to X into Xorg, if that makes sense. If it doesn't, then you probably have no clue what I'm talking about in any of this video. Um, but yeah. Full Debian install, and I can quickly switch back and forth. And that's it. that's just a quick look at Chrome OS and running Linux uh, in a true root. And I, again, I used um, Crouton, which is a very popular, very easy to use script. 
but if you're familiar with sure roots and the bootstrap you can pull down your own and install it but this is very easy because it's got xorg configuration set up it automatically shares your download directory which i have had some permission issues with if i'm trying to save files to the download directory i think so if i move into downloads here let me try to touch a file touch to oh that worked no problem so i have a touch file and if I come into here and open up my file browser and I go to downloads, oh, it's right there. That's the empty file I just created. So you can interact back and forth in here. Um, in Termux, there's some issues of going into SD card. I actually made a shortcut link in my home directory under Debian uh, called SD card MP3s because uh, that's just what the SD card was called. And now I'm on my SD card and I can interact with this, which as you can see is actually a bootable Linux distro. This SD card is actually carrying a copy of um, uh, Debian for this Chiroot, and it's also carrying Linux Mint that I can boot into, but again, I had keyboard issues, which are probably easily fixed. Um, but that's just a quick look at using um, a Chromebook and having full Linux, even though my machine isn't supporting uh, the Linux apps, which a lot of new Chromebooks are, it doesn't matter because I can flip over to this and I'm running Debian anyway. Uh, yeah, so it, like I said, if I wanted to run GIMP in here, I could, I guess, I could run GIMP in Chrome OS if I had a newer Chromebook, but I don't need to. I can just do it here. And yeah, I have i3 running, which is pretty lightweight. It's not really using that much more processing power than it would if it was in uh, Chrome OS. Anyway. That's it. That was just a quick look to show, show you how this works. Um, biggest drawbacks are just the keyboard not being a standard keyboard, but there's workarounds for that. I do thank you for watching. As always, uh, I hope that you visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris K. There's a link in the description. As always, I hope that you have a great day.